Hey, what's up? It is your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge. This is the B-Side Podcast. Now, it's been a little while since I've been reviewing Impact on a regular weekly basis, so I wanted to get back into that every single Sunday with the B-Side Podcast, but this is going to be really different. I'm not going to be talking for an hour, hour, 15 minutes about the show. I'm just going to hit the main points, the bullet points about the show, the matches, the creative, the storylines, whatever. And that's going to happen at the end of the podcast. I'm going to kick the podcast off talking about Impact news, rumors, whatever is going on in the world of Impact. Maybe previewing next week's show, letting you know some changes we've got coming, whatever it is. Now, if you're not someone who's really big on listening to your podcast on YouTube, you just got to look up the Impact Lounge on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast. Podbean is the host for the show. That's the main, the main hub. But um, I'm not really a big fan of their app, but you can go to impactlounge.podbean.com. But just, just look up the Impact Lounge wherever you stream your podcast. That way you don't have to really worry about it on YouTube. Sometimes it's very difficult for people to listen to longer files or longer audio on YouTube. So you can go ahead and do that. So with this particular episode of the B-Side, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the LAX departure, which I already talked about that on YouTube. So I will link you guys in the pinned comment to that video. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons people are not really watching Impact Wrestling right now. What are some of the hurdles? What are some of the roadblocks? Uh, You know, all that ish. And I'm going to preview Cali Combat for next week. And then, of course, get into Impact. I like to do it a little bit different where I'm going to kick it off with the main event. Talk about, you know, the most important match of the show. And then I will go into the rest of the show from there. But again, if you don't want to listen on YouTube but you're interested in the B-Side podcast and the total non-stop Impact podcast where they do a longer, more entertaining review of Impact, just whatever you stream your podcast, go ahead and do that. Also, last thing, I'm gonna be doing a listener comment of the week. So within the first 24 hours of the upload, whoever leaves the most insightful comment, but it's gotta be you know clear, concise, and, and semi-brief, but whatever comment I like the most, I'm gonna highlight that comment next week on the show. Uh, shout you out, read the comment, and then, you know, make any comments of my own based on what you had to say. So if this is a format you think you're going to dig for a podcast with regarding Impact Wrestling, give this video a thumbs up and leave any kind of comment you like in the first 24 hours. I always will always be available for every upload to reply to your comments. I haven't been great about that in the past, but going forward and the past few days, I've been really good about it. So... If you dig it, give it a thumbs up. This is the B-Side. Let's get into the show. One, two, one, two. You know how we do. It is your boy, BQ. This is the B-Side podcast. This is basically a re-debut of the podcast. To to some of you, it's a debut. It's never really a podcast that I got off the ground. You know, I was basically doing the Impact Lounge Impact Reviews forever now. And I've stepped away from that for a little bit. So it's been a while since I've reviewed impact on a regular weekly basis but that's not what this podcast is going to be about i'm not going to sit here and go match through match and and speak to you for an hour yes i'm going to i'm going to review the show but more more in a bullet point format i really want to kick this podcast off talking about the news the rumors just whatever's going on in impact the stuff that's a little more juicy stuff that people are a little more into and want to hear about and hear opinions about and and talk about whatever So that's going to be a new direction for the podcast, and it should come to you every single Sunday going forward. I know I took a really big break from just the Impact Lounge in general, but I feel good now. I'm feeling motivated. I feel refreshed, and life is good. Life is really good, and I've said it a couple times before. Like I am a single dad, and I have three kids, and I don't mean single dad like part-time dad. I mean like I have them every day. My youngest is six, my oldest is 14, So, and then I have a middle who's 10. But now uh, my girlfriend has moved in, and she brought another one with her. She's six also, but now i got some help, and my mind is a much more controlled, relaxed place, and I can focus again on what I do with the Impact Lounge and Impact Wrestling and bring it to you each and every week. So... Enough of me babbling, though. Let's talk first things first. LAX. I talked about this on the YouTube channel. If you're listening on YouTube right now, I'm going to link that video in the pinned comment. But they're gone. They're done. 
they wrap things up at the Mexico set of tapings and they are moving on. They gave us a couple really, really good years, but now they're gone. They're moving on. Now, someone had told me when I make the comment that, you know, they've done everything they can do in impact, that that's me feeding you bullshit, that it's a BS excuse. And, you know, there's so many more feuds they could have. Yes, this is very true. They spend so much time with the OGs and the Lucha Brothers that there's other tag teams coming in that they can they can work with, they can do programs with. And they they spent so much time working with those guys. Like, yeah, they could have done a really pro- long program with the North, you know, or the Rascals, whatever, Desi Hit Squad, Deaners. Like, there's, there's more teams now. They could have even, I would have even been cool with another OVE feud at this point. But when I say that he, they have done everything they can do, LAX's stock has never been higher than it is right now and it's not going to get any higher with impact they're four times tag team champions like if they win it five six seven times like who cares what they're competing with the history of the wolves like i get that but it, their stock is going to be no higher within impact wrestling and they're at the peak of their careers right now if you look at their, their ages you know it's still fairly young guys santana's had a couple injuries you know this is a point like if you follow sports you know uh, mainly in the nba because there's more free agency movement where a player, you know, like, like take Anthony Davis, for instance, you know, he bolted from the Pel. He didn't want to play for the Pelicans anymore. He kind of looked at it as like, I've accomplished what I can accomplish in new Orleans. You know, I need to move on and do something else somewhere else, you know? And it, it's, it's kind of similar with a, with a team like LA. they're not going to get any more over with the impact fans than they are right now. And when they were competing against the young bucks on the Jericho cruise, you know, and, and even when LAX is on Twitter or Facebook saying we're the best tag team in the world, people are laughing at them because they don't know. There's so many people who don't know who LAX is because they're the people who want to watch Impact. And they don't know that this really is one of the best freaking tag teams in the world. So now they deserve that opportunity because they, they can't get any more popular on Impact. It's, it's impossible. Unless what Santana becomes world champion, that wasn't going to happen. And their brand is as a tag team. Something tells me they're not going to be LAX. I think they're going to be Santana and Ortiz personally. So we'll see if that is what happens. I don't think they're going to take the LAX brand with them though. I think that's really different the way. I know intellectual property impact has been a lot more loose with that now with the contracts. But I think LAX, that brand is different. I think that's one that impact is going to hold on to. So that being said, I think they'll be Santana and Ortiz. I don't think they're going to go back to their indie tag team name but if they go to a company like AEW, so i guess the original rumor was that they're going to nxt but it looks like AEW is where they want to go and you i mean you got the lucha brothers there who they can continue to work with they had some of the best matches in the world with those guys and how many people didn't see it because they don't want to give impact a chance then you got the bucks and they got some good tag teams they're the the lot of the focus with AEW is going to be on tag team wrestling so this is a really good landing spot for LAX because NXT's lost a lot of steam. And when they move to this uh, Fox Sports 1, that that brand is going to go downhill real fast. Uh, mark my words on that. As far as the quality of the show, it's just going to be another like SmackDown. You know what I mean? So that being said, um, if that's the landing spot for LAX, I think that's really good. They're going to get they're they're they're, they're going to get in front of more eyes in the United States. You know worldwide that's that begs the differ because impact has some great contracts around the world but in the united states and wrestling in front of large crowds like this is a great opportunity for lax because they're at that point in their life they're still fairly young they don't want to get injured you know if they get if they if they resign with inject impact for another year and then one of them gets hurt like where they go from there you know so this is a good opportunity for them good time i just wish that you know, Diamante, they would have been able to find a way to keep her around longer. So she would have a lot of name value now too, but I think she's been doing some NXT work and all that. So good for her. There was a poll, I think it was ringside wrestling. And if I am, if that is the wrong, the, uh, the wrong brand, I apologize, but they put a tweet out asking people why they don't watch impact. They're like, give us real reasons why you don't watch it. And it seemed like a majority of the people were talking about, well, I, it's hard to watch. I can't find it, the channel. So me, myself, I even stepped away from, I, I was, I've said this before. I, I, when I was younger, I was a 
bigger WWE fan. So I watched TNA really casually. And when they moved on to Destination America, I was just like, I don't have this channel, you know. So, you know, I didn't watch them in that. So I really got really excited and back into them when they when they moved to Pop because that was a channel I got. And at that time in my life, I didn't really watch wrestling streaming online because in my spare time since I had you know, I was doing music and everything like that's kind of what took up my spare time. So. You know, if it wasn't on, if I wasn't watching it on TV or my DVR, like I wasn't going to stream it on my computer because I was just doing other things. I was chasing other, other dreams and everything. So that's a real thing when it becomes difficult to watch because I mean, right now they're on the worst possible channel they, they could have had. And it was actually really ridiculous when they announced the pursuit deal. And, um, <laughs> I don't know if they did on Twitter, but on Facebook, they said the, the, the wait is over the battle you know, they acted like there was a bidding war for the best wrestling on tele- television. We have found a home. It is pursuit. Like, no one even knew what that was. And that's that's the kind of things where, marketing-wise, they just look, look kind of ridiculous sometimes, you know? Whoever, whoever does that social media shit. But pursuit, at the time, I had DirecTV and I had pursuit, but I actually just canceled it the month before the announcement. Um, so now I have basic cable and I, and I don't have it. So the other flip side of this is that the time slot, I mean, for me, I watch it at 9 PM central time. So I'm at work at that time. Now it's, it's late for me. It's, it's my last hour of the shift and I'm not really doing anything. So I can, I can actually watch the show, but I watch it for the last, the first, I'm sorry, the first like 45 minutes. Because then I got to kind of get start getting ready to go. So I watch it for about 45 minutes. And the problem I was facing was that it, you know, it wouldn't show up on Impact Plus for a few days. So I would watch, if you can hear my kids screaming in the backyard, I, I mean, in the background, I apologize. As I said, I've, I've got four here. Two of them are little. And uh, it's pretty much impossible to keep this place quiet, no matter what room I'm doing this in. Um, but that being said... Um, I usually watch the first 45 minutes and then I'm kind of stuck. You know, there is a web, there's websites you can stream it, but uh, I don't usually like messing with those a whole lot, but now I'm trying to do that so I can stay up on the podcast. So I'll watch it, you know, the first part on Twitch, but it, it's late to watch TV. You know what I mean? Like I'm almost 40 years old. I'm 39 years old. Like when 10 o'clock, like when 11 o'clock hits, I'm done for the night for the most part. You know, I'm not, I'm not that young anymore where I'm going to stay up till one, two, three in the morning. That's just not going to happen with this guy. So the time slot is difficult and it's crazy because they own pursuit or Anthem does at least. So it just, it is kind of funny that they, that's the slot that they got. And who knows what's going on with this access TV thing. It seems like it's a big mess right now. And it's, it seemed like this was like going to happen. And now who the hell knows, but that's where it's important that they get on a better network because there's some people who are not going to go out of their way to watch it. You know, forget the target demographics and everything and trying to get the casuals like the people who the wrestling fans, you know, who were who were like me years ago, who was kind of a casual TNA fan. You know, if I got a chance to watch it, I did, but I didn't really go out of my way. You know, if you're on a station like Pursuit, that's difficult. And a lot of people don't like watching Twitch and the Twitch has gone down from like 10,000 viewers. That was that this weekend, like this week it was like 2000. So there's never been less eyes on the product than right now, which really sucks because it's good. And so many good matches are happening and the Tessa Blanchard stuff is pretty good, but so many people are are missing it. So um, from basically from that whole survey, that seemed like to be the main thing was that people just don't know how to watch it. You know, a lot of people don't like streaming shit on their phones. So I, I don't like it. You know, if I'm at work, and I can prop up my phone next to me, then yeah, I, I can do it. But, you know, a lot of people don't really like doing that. So, th- you know, there were some guys, you know, who were really negative towards a product. Um, and we both, we all knows, know this as Impact fans, that there's people who just don't want to give the company another chance due to what happened in the past. Like, it's crazy when I started the Impact Lounge talking about this, and now I'm still talking about this to this day, there are people who still won't watch the products because of what Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan did. You know, that's, that's freaking asinine. That's ridiculous. And this isn't being like trying to be a Homer, but like the impact product is better 
every week than the WWE product. Every week. Not sometimes. Not once a month, twice a month. It's, it's consistently better. And the things that people complain, well, WWE does this and this and this. Like, Impact's the opposite. They do the opposite. They do the things that people complain the other company doesn't do, but they still will not give it a chance. And no matter who, excuse me, I dropped my phone there. No matter who's on the damn roster, I mean, Lucha Brothers at one point for a long time, you know, um, Tessa Blanchard, Brian Cage, Johnny Impact, Austin Aries. I, I mean, I'm just listing names, you know, that are, that have come and gone. You know, now to Neil Dashwood, like these are good names. There's no reason from a roster standpoint to at least not look at the company. It's like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, the creative isn't there. John Gerberg and all shit. These guys aren't there. It's a completely different company. I deal with this as a Clippers fan, as an LA Clippers fan. People are always, oh, you're never going to get out of the second round. You're never going to do this. I'm like, you know, if I'm speaking over your head because you don't know basketball here, I apologize. But I tell people... You mean because Blake Griffin and Chris Paul didn't get the job done five, six years ago that you know, that's probably a little, it wasn't that long ago, but because those guys didn't get the job done and the, the previous owner who's not like, it's not even the same franchise anymore. It's not the same players. It's not the same owner. It's not the same front office. It's only the same coach and he wasn't the problem. And people want to still tie them to their, their history of mediocrity. And you, you know what I'm saying? This is a different company. This, this is not the same. Dixie Carter's not walking around. You know, um, what the hell's his name? Uh, Vince, Vince Russo's not walking around. You know? And you can sit there and be, oh, well, you know, that was their best roster. <laughs> People, this is their best roster to me. I don't, I don't care. Some of you guys might be, like, real nostalgic saying, oh, you know, the AJ days and when Joe was young and this and that. Dude, this, this roster right here. This is a killer. They're killing it all the way up and down. And I was telling someone on Facebook, the magic with Impact is that every single person on the roster is involved in a storyline. They have something for everybody. How many times do you... I, I, I watched WWE for years, and there was guys like, what? they'd have nothing for these guys. They have no clue how to get these guys on TV. They wouldn't even give it a chance. Like, Impact can do that. They get everybody involved. And, and, you know, a few years ago, like for me, I, I like the year, it was the last year Billy Corgan was around, you know, Mike Bennett was there and all these guys, but they were signing guys, uh, you know, Marche Rockets, one of them, who I, I, was, I was a fan of, they had no clue what to do with this guy. Braxton Sutter, no clue what to do with him. Caleb Conley for the longest time, no clue what to do with him. MJ Jenkins, no clue. Ava Story, no clue. And a couple of those, a couple of those guys came back, you know, coming came in with Jeff Jarrett and everything. But they're signing these guys just because, oh, they're kind of talented. But they can never get them involved in a storyline, and then they were gone from the company. Like, it's freaking ridiculous, you know. Right now, someone comes in, and there's a direction for everybody. Like, there's no one just floating. You know, the only floaters may be TJP, and I don't even think he's on the roster. I think they just brought him for. A couple tapings because I Lord knows where where that dude is right now, and I don't think he's on the roster page. But there were some people who were negative, and Jordan Grace, you know, put out a text, and the dirt sheets blew it up like she went off on this fan, and it's not really what happened. She just said, "If you think Impact sucks, you haven't watched a single episode in 2019." Like the last few episodes have been so good, and that match that was the North versus the Rascals was honest to God one of the best tag team matches I've ever seen. Like, do you guys agree to like it was one of the best matches I've ever seen in, in, in modern wrestling history? You know, it wasn't like there were spots, but it wasn't like a spot fest. Like, it still had a lot of everything made sense. There was a lot of psychology to it too. And I've I've kind of gone on record saying I'm not a huge Rascals fan, but that's more because of the gimmick, not the wrestling. And then the the North, I'm like in love with. But this match was so damn good. Like, there's no way that you can't watch that match and say, wow, Impact's killing. I'm going to put it like this. When the Deaners and the Daisy Hit Squad battled this week, like, a few months ago, people would have been so disinterested in that. Because a lot of the times, the Hit Squad hadn't got 
like they would have their matches, but they wouldn't really have time. You know, this match, they were like, hey, you two teams go out and do your thing. And I can tell you from watching them locally here, like Jake and Rohit have a lot of chemistry together. So I knew the match was going to be really good, um, but they really went at it. So for me, if I'm a casual fan and I'm watching that match and saying, wow, these two teams aren't even in the tag team title picture, but they were given time and they put on a good match. Like, how do you, how do you see someone like that and be like, it's still say that the company sucks. Like, I don't get it. And it's going to be really unfortunate if the company goes out of business one day just because people wouldn't give it a chance. And then someone buys a library and someone watches the epi- these episodes like, oh, damn, Impact was pretty damn good. Ugh. It just, um, the company's been doing really good stuff the last couple of years. It's it's just unfortunate that, you know, I mean, you know, and they're getting on the road and they're they're selling out, you know, even if it's a house show that's 500 seats, you know what I'm saying? Like they're selling them out. Or at least coming damn close. So they're they're getting audiences, they're getting crowds. So that's working in that sense. I think the partnership with the the um, independent companies have, have worked in that sense. And now they're pretty much traveling. You know, they're still like semi partnering with the companies, but for the most part, they're doing the shows themselves. Now they're kind of getting to like impact shows. If you notice the last couple, you know, they might have cha- partnered semi with Hollywood Championship Wrestling, but they didn't really partner with them. You know what I mean? So they're doing better in that sense where they can hit the road and they can put some butts in the seats. But, you know, I think I think at this point they were expecting a lot more than that. But it's really good because Bound for Glory looks like it's the, the seats are going really, really good for that. It's almost sold out. I was just looking at the chart yesterday. It's it's damn near sold out. And I think they added a few seats. The two seats next to me are still there. <laughs> that was going to be for my uh, my lady and her daughter, but she uh, they're not going to go. So someone's got to sit there. Let's talk uh, Cali Combat. So that is going to be next week's show. I was really confused because I thought it was a, a like a Twitch special. And I'm like, where the hell did they film this? You know. And then I remember they did a TV taping and um, it was like Oceanside, California, that general area. So I think it was good that they let the military in free for the, the Cali shows. Now, I've said before, that's home for me, Southern California, Orange County. It's not a big military area, but where they did the um, the show for Cali Combat, like that's uh, I've seen I've seen pictures of the crowd. It was a pretty good crowd, but that's a military area. So, um, you know, as a troop myself, I thought that was cool that they did that. But as I said, I thought it was a Twitch special at first. I was like really confused because you remember last month, or is it this month that they did a a Twitch show, um, or is Impact Plus show and Impact basically at the same time. Which was really weird. So that's kind of what I thought they were doing this time around. But I'll say Cali Combat looks pretty interesting. I think this looks like a like a pretty good card. And and you can tell that, you know, again, this is this is an impact show. You know, they're not bringing in these local local dudes. You know, um, they did that a little bit for Unbreakable, but they're really doing a good job of branding themselves as a, you know traveling impact product now. But let's get into the card real quick, and then. Um, talk about this past impact which was which was which was good so don't go anywhere folks uh first of all this is a non-match thing taya valkyrie has an announcement and this is supposed to be changing the the direction of the knockouts division or or something or other so they're starting to make um you know the, the knockouts really really relevant again and really good so let's see what Ty Valkyrie says. Um, hopefully it, it is a good announcement that makes sense and it's going to get people hyped for the knockouts division And because she doesn't really have any competitors at this point um, because Rosemary's kind of – Rosemary's in – which is weird. Ro, there's no reason Rosemary shouldn't be challenging her, but – and she hasn't – Rosemary hasn't even finished things with Jessica Havoc, but somehow she, somehow she kind of like – or probably even Sue Young for that matter, but she's kind of factored herself into this whole thing with Jordan Grace and Kiara Madison. So I'm excited because that's new for Rosemary, like their new matches or whatever, but new opponents. But she's not really focused on the knockouts title. Doesn't look like Sue or Havoc is going to be for the time being. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised if they put Tanil against <laughs> against Taya Balfour Glory, you know, 
I don't think Impact can help themselves when it comes to shiny new objects that have some buzz behind them. I'd, I'd really be willing to bet that's going to be the match for Bound for Glory. But who knows? But, you know, with Taya's announcement, it would be a good debut spot for Tanil, but I don't think that's what happened because I think we would kind of know. But, I, I, you know, I feel like it's going to be kind of a silly announcement and then like a challenger is going to come out. I think something like that most likely will happen. Some of these other matches, though, we're getting Willie Mack versus Trey. So these are two guys who haven't faced before. I mean, they face in the six-man match. These are two baby faces, two similar styles, but such different builds, completely different stature. So that should be fun as an X Division match. Havoc has taken on uh, my favorite knockout, Alicia Edwards. Um, Alicia's going to get her ass kicked. I mean, I... Um, I... I <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one. Like, this one might be kind of rough for Alicia. The North is, uh, they put out like an open challenge. And they're going to be facing Reno Scum. So, you don't know how happy I am about this. I'm a, I'm a huge Reno Scum fan. And a huge North fan. And at Unbreakable, it was those two teams. And um, I don't even remember who the other team was. I'm sorry. But it was a three-way match. And oh, it was it was Swan in the Mac. Willie, I always say the Mac from Lucha Underground. Willie Mac. So really excellent, but just to see like these two teams go at it because they're very similar in the fact that um, the the way they do tag team wrestling is very similar. So I am pumped for that one. Rich Swan is getting his rematch versus Jake Christ X Division Championship. I don't think anyone's expecting Rich Swan to take this title back. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing a upload on the YouTube lounge intent, imp, uh, excuse me, um, impact lounge YouTube channel soon about Jay Chris as the X division champion. And why I really think he's, uh, the new direction of the X division and why his reign is going to be something special, but he's taking on rich Swan. Sammy Callahan's taking on Tommy dreamer. Um, I have no interest in Tommy dreamer. I have no interest in this match. Um, if Sammy Callahan loses, I'll, I'll be pretty upset. There's uh, no reason Tommy Dreamer should be picking up any wins on Impact Television. I don't even think he should be on Impact Television, to be honest. I'm just, I, I'm I'm done. I know, I, I think I say this every single time I podcast. Like, it, it's just, the Tommy Dreamer thing is just, oh my God. It just seems like anytime they need a, even the announcer said, like, how does he factor himself into with every new signing? Like, he just shows up, you know, randomly. It's, it's like Impact Creative needs a random person for a storyline, and they, they throw Tommy Dreamer. And they're like, I'm done with Tommy Dreamer. I just, I just am. I respect everything he has given to the business. And I'm not even saying he's doing a bad job because he's not. Like, when he step, when he comes in the ring and he does this and this, like, he does good work, you know. But for me, the stick is, is played out. The well is dry 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 i mean they could have brought out anybody to team up with tessa blanchard and it would have immediately like catapulted them you know i, I mentioned T tjp earlier like i don't even know what's going on with him but like what if he came out instead of tommy dreamer like he would have been thrust into a big storyline right away you could have taken anybody and and elevate them but they you know, they went to the well again. So I have no real interest in this match. Rhino versus Michael Elgin. At first, I had no interest in Rhino returning, but I'm really happy with um, what he's doing so far and the limited time we've seen him and the interviews and everything he's saying. Like, I'm behind Rhino now. Even him with the T Impact Wrestling t-shirt on in the show. And then Michael Elgin, I'm crazy about everything he does. He has been a killer signing for the company. He is... He has given 200% everything he's had to do, his promos, his matches. If you didn't watch Michael Elgin versus Eddie Edwards at Unbreakable, that is a pay-per-view quality match. That is That was an A-fucking-plus match. You have to see that. So I think that's it for the card. Um, I don't believe there's, there's uh, anything else. We know the big guys, Brian Cage and all that's not showing up. Um, He's still nursing that injury, so we're going to have to talk about Brian Cage and that title run soon on the Impact Lounge channel because that's been interesting, uh, to say the least. So let's get into Impact here. Let's, let's you know, I, I'm going to do it in a really brief manner. I am not going to drag this out at all. The opening match of this thing was Moose versus Falaba. 
I agree with Moose. He should be in the freaking title picture. But right now, there's there's just not really a way of getting him in there, and that's cool. That that's whatever, you know. Um, hopefully, they can make that happen in due time. But I think right now with this character, he would make an amazing champion. He's kind of doing this, you know, angle where he, you know, people are just feeding him this, these pieces of garbage to wrestle instead of having some real meaningful matches. So this match was a lot better versus Falaba than I expected it to be. And I got to say about Falaba, he came into impact when it was Global Force Wrestling. He was with Mario Bokura. They lost to everybody. He was a comedy character. He, they paired him with KM. He continued to be a comedy character. Put him with Scarlet. He was still kind of a comedy character. The turning point for Fala was when they put him in the match with Austin Aries. And he had a hell of a match. And now, like, this dude is, like, on Samoa Joe level. He Like, he's getting up there to where he's still what people love about him. But he's... He's more serious. Like, if you notice when he came down to the ring, he wasn't doing the ba ba. Like, he did it in the match when he needed the crowd to get behind him and, and pump him up. But he didn't come down doing it. Like, he came down like he wanted to fight. So, the character progression with Falaba is, is one of the best on Impact right now. And the match was, the match was good. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Moose guy. So, um, you know, Moose got the win. Awesome. Madison, Rain, and Kira Hogan took on Alexia Nicole and Jordan Grace. Alexia Nicole's impact, I mean, excuse me, her Instagram says she's Impact's new girl. Um, they kind of allude to her being a new knockout, but the website hasn't updated her as a knockout. It has Tanil on there, but not her. So I I don't know, you know. Um, it's going to depend if she's at the Mexico tapings because it's one thing. I think she's a local competitor in Canada there, so... That's what's going to be telling. Is she going to move on with them and, and do something? Because when she was in this tag team match here, she became an afterthought by the end of the match. But she's good. She's talented. They need they need girls like that in the company um, with that experience level. And, you know, there's there's a lot to do with her, you know. So and then she can even act as a bit of an enhancement talent. I mean, Alicia Edwards has been having to do that for a, a really long time. You know, she kind of deserves to get some some wins under her belt at some point. But uh, this this tag team match, I'm not a huge like frenemies fan, like what they're doing with the two of them. I'd rather Madison and Kiera just freaking team up. I don't understand the point of what they're doing. Uh, I got to say Jordan, Grace and Kiera have. <clears throat> excuse me, they have wonderful chemistry together. They, they've they had a couple one-on-one -on -one matches that were so good, and this the Kiara heel turn has been everything. I didn't really care for her a whole lot as a baby face. Like, what they're doing with her is really good. Madison Reigns on much better heel. So, I'm behind what they're doing. <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Um, the match was okay for what it was. Uh, they ain't... I knew basically when they jumped her into the match that someone was going to show up and it was Rosemary and she's kind of really randomly inserted herself into this feud. But as I said, Alexi Nicole became a complete afterthought by the end of the match. So that's what kind of has me thinking maybe she's not a knockout, but I hope she is. I kind of like her. I kind of like her. RVD Rich Swan and Willie Mack took on the Rascals. So this was a match here that initially I didn't have a whole lot of interest in because I'm not the biggest RVD fan in the world. Um, and I didn't really understand it because RV was RVD was in the treehouse last week or whatever they call it. So it was really weird that they're going against each other. But then I saw, you know, once they all get out there, you know, you got two baby face teams and you realize, oh, it's just kind of like a friendly competition thing. I thought the beginning of the match was pretty funny. It reminded me of the very first Ninja Turtles movie. If you're old enough to have seen that to where at the end, the turtles are like trying to take on the shredder and they one by one go up and just get their, like their ass kicked within a couple seconds and then just roll out of the way and the next guy comes. You know what I mean? So I kind of like that. I did laugh when when Dez, you know, left his face out there for uh, RVD to hit him. Um, but then but then he gets the kick from Willie Mack. This match was good. It was it over delivered for me. It wasn't something I was like super excited about, even though the six competitors are great workers. And I, I love Rich Swan. But there were some spots, man, with Rich Swan and the, and, uh, the Rascals that were so good. And um, if they were to have a rematch, I would be into it. I will say this much, though. The Rascals just came off one of the best tag team matches, the best matches I've ever seen with the North. 
to where they weren't the potheads. They went out there and they were freaking wrestling. And then they kind of go back to just being jovial again and just kind of a light heart. Like they just, damn, they just had this opportunity. They came up pubic hair within becoming the tag team champions. And now they're just kind of like fooling around again. So I wish this all kind of happened before their tag team title match with the North, but a uh, good match. Another match that got some time was the Deaners and the Daisy Hit Squad. And uh, as I said, Rohit and Jake have chemistry. The storyline, there's a little bit of comedy to it, you know what I mean? But it works for me. I'm in, I'm entertained by it. I enjoy it. And these guys got some time. Like, they haven't given the Daisy Hit Squad time like this in a match since they've joined the company. Sometimes Rohit gets, like, singles matches or, like, multi-man matches where he gets time. But as far as a tag team goes, and even though they did lost, so now they have to do, like, be the servants or, or, or whatever. Um, this this was just, this was good. This wasn't. This wasn't just some like throwaway tag team match you threw on there. Like they they had chemistry, they got time. You know I, we haven't seen Raj get in any kind of time like that whatsoever. So I was into this. Um, I hope the feud continues because I can keep watching this. So there's definitely humor involved now because they got to be the servants and do chores on the ranch or whatever. And you know after the match there was there was there was comedy to it. Um, before I get into the main event, you know, it's fun. <laughs> I totally broke my own rule here. I meant to kick things off with the main event, and uh, I didn't. So I don't know if you caught that or not, but my bad. Going forward, the main event's going to be the first thing I talk about. Uh, I was just looking at a list of the matches, and I kind of went on as the show goes. I want to say I'm a really big fan of the – some of you may not be, and I get that, but the ASOS and an Eddie and Alicia thing, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, they're, they're pushing the – the limit a little bit with I'm going to bang your wife and all that. But, you know, I love Eddie. I love Alicia. I like Ace Austin a lot. I'm, I'm increasingly really like him. When he was a baby face and first, you know, came on, I was just like, ah, he's not really doing a whole lot for me. But but now in this role, this baby face thing, this is good. And I cannot wait. This is the one thing every episode I'm like, what's going to happen with these guys? Like, this, this is what I'm really – um, looking forward to going forward. So main event though, Tommy Dreamer and Tessa Blanchard, they took on Sammy Callahan and Dave Christ. I was really happy that Dave Christ got, got the nod for this. I think he's super underrated, underutilized, and they could push him almost like they put, push Jake, but they choose not to. And, uh, I would like to see him get a little more shine because I think OVE will be better if the four guys are all, you know, you don't know who you're going to face, but you know you're going to, you know, better pack a lunch that night. You know what I mean? Like, if they have Jake where he's, like, not really the important member or the, you know, jobber, so to speak. Like, I don't I don't like that. But they do a good job with OVE in general because usually with these factions, there's a leader who's really good and then the other people suck. It's it, We're kind of, like, far past those days where everyone's good in a faction. So I was really happy to see Dave in this. And... He got some time to show what he can do. You know, he wasn't just out there to... I mean, we, we all knew he was going to take the pin of this thing. I mean, we all knew that. But um, I think uh, he showed that he can hang with these guys, you know. Uh, no no interest in Tommy Dreamer being involved in this. Uh, no interest in Tommy Dreamer, Dreamer in the main event on Impact. So, uh, you know, that part there, I'm just like... Ugh. I'm probably going to complain about the usage of Tommy dreamer every single time, time he comes on. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. It just, it just the, the one part of the show that drives me nuts, but Tessa looked really good in this. I didn't really like her match at unbreakable with Sammy. Like I showed my girlfriend, like, Hey, watch these two. You know what I mean? And I was kind of like embarrassed because the match was so slow and, and methodical that it just told a different story than Slammiversary. But, I expected like a slam anniversary match basically. Um, but she looked really good in this. Like she, she got a lot of offense in like when they did the mashup challenge, like she barely got to do anything. You know, they this one. She had to do a lot of the work. It's freaking dreamer. Can't do all the, you know, they can't ha have him the main, main worker. 
really funny when they went for the low blows and you know Dave <laughs> did a low blow on Tessa then was so proud of himself like he's the smartest motherfucker alive and uh Tessa didn't feel it the last match the last move I should say when she did Magnum with the kendo stick I was like is she gonna do Magnum with the kendo stick like to me I was like how the hell is she gonna pull that off and she sure as hell did um that's that's really good um just technique you know to be able to be able to do that to be able to put the stick in place and still deliver Magnum. The Magnum she did in the corner running up on Dave was was really good too. So overall, killer episode. This was a good episode of Impact. I've really enjoyed the last few. Like really, really enjoy them. There's, there's been nothing that I'm just like, oh, I, I hate this. I hate what they're doing with this. Like I'm, I'm into it. Um, can't wait to see what happens next week. I think the Mexico tapings kick off. They've been showing the car. The car looks good. You know, Tino's wrestling. So that's why I'm kind of hoping she has some kind of video package, something on this episode to hype her up. Like when, when Taya does her announcement, maybe, you know, Tanil is involved with this in one way, shape, or form. I don't really know. Maybe it's a backstage thing. Like something. Don't just have her show up at the freaking tapings and wrestle. So we'll see. But I can't wait to talk about Tanil's debut with you guys. I'll be talking about it on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. And I'll talk about it here on the B-side as well. So that's going to wrap it up for me this week. We are under 40 minutes for the entire podcast. So I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll continue to do this going forward. I am your boy.